It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the 33rd President of St. Louis University, Dr. Fred Pistello. Thank you all for uh, joining this morning on short notice and being here for this occasion. I want to thank Mr. Adorjan for leading this process to its conclusion, uh, Mr. Smith for leading the search process. I want to thank the members of the search committee and the selection committee, as well as the executive committee of the Board of Trustees and the board itself. This has been a very exciting time. I think it was an incredibly well-run search led by Jamie Farrar of AGB. I am excited to be here and excited to have my family with me here. Let me just uh, briefly introduce them to you in a little more detail than Mr. Adorjan did. Uh, my wife, Fran, and I met in uh, graduate school. We are both sociologists. Uh, we met in August of 1976. We were friends for three years, started dating in May of 1979, got engaged in the summer of 1980, and married in September of 1981. And I'd like to share that just to impress her that I remember those dates. <laughs> uh, we have two children. Our daughter, Bettina, is a flyer. She graduated from the University of Dayton in 2010. She double majored in economics and then international studies with a minor in human rights. She wanted to do service afterwards, so she joined as a volunteer the Sisters of the Humility of Mary, working in Immokalee, Florida, which is at the opposite end of Collier County that Naples is at. She worked with the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, um, working with the farm workers, trying to improve their conditions uh, of the women and the children and the workers uh, themselves. Uh, after three years working as a volunteer with the Sisters of HM, she went to work directly for the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, where she currently works. Our son, Freddie, is a dolphin. He graduated from Lemoyne last May. Uh, recently relocated to Cincinnati and next month begins work. He was a finance major with Fidelity Investments in Covington, Kentucky, just across the river. We are all excited to be here. Now, as I uh, told Mr. Dorjan this morning, nothing you're going to see this morning is nearly as exciting as what we saw last night. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you the reception broke up. It was kind of an exciting reception when it started, but we had the TV on and the reception got less exciting uh, <laughs> over time. So uh, it kind of broke up and the Billikens were down and there was no hope. And Freddie and Bettina and Fran and I went back to the hotel and we're sitting there in the room and I said, turn on the TV, let's, let's see the game. And Freddie goes, the game's definitely over and you don't want to know the score. <laughs> so we turned it on. And the Billikens were only down by five. And Freddie, who's a fanatic about these things, go, they've got a shot. <laughs> so we watched. And then we saw that game tied at the end and go in overtime. And it was so exciting. And we're in a hotel room, so we're trying not to scream too loudly. <laughs> but what a great day. And a great day for this university. And it's not simply the victory, although that's exciting and we all celebrate it. But I know enough to know about athletics here. And it's a quality program, a program of integrity. And those student athletes combined, your over 300 uh, athletes, NCAA athletes, have a GPA well over three points. That's the sort of thing you're proud of, the service they do. One of the things I've learned just in the past couple of days is that this community over the last few years has done a million hours of service. How impressive that is. So we're certainly very proud of the Billikens. Now, I can tell you as I stand before you, I was thinking, what would I say? I wanted to start by simply saying, I am very humble and very honored. And I thought, how trite that is. Anybody who would take this position would say that. But how true it is. If you know this institution, its importance, its mission, and its success, how could I not be humble and honored to be here? This was a wonderful process, a collaborative process that you went through. I was very taken with it. For me, it started with a call from Jamie sometime in October, November. 
And he said, you've been nominated for this position. I want to tell you a little bit about where SLU is. And I'd like, you know, don't do anything now, but just think about it. I got so excited because I've been following you particularly closely since I became provost at the University of Dayton in 2000. I've been following you closely because you were a competitor in an aspirin school. So I've been watching what you've been doing, how impressive you are in the success that you've had. And so after that call with Jamie, I was incredibly excited. I went home that night and Fran said, did you take some drugs or something? What? <laughs> so at first she's puzzled and then she thought, oh my God, here we go again. <laughs> and those, then I had further conversations with Jamie and it was into December and he said, I just want to share your name with the search committee as a possible candidate, tell them a little bit about you, see what they think. And then he calls me back and he says, I think you ought to apply. So I did. And then I came out here for the uh, first interview. It was the very beginning of February. It was on a uh, Wednesday. It, and you had that terrible snowstorm. And I thought, well, this is no different than Syracuse. <laughs> but that was an important two hours that I spent with the search committee. I was impressed, one, of the diversity of the committee. You certainly had a number of trustees, but you also had three faculty members, you had an academic administrator, and you had a student. And we had a great conversation. And although I'd been reading about you, I got to experience you through you, the members of this community. And at the end of the conversation, they allowed me to ask a question or two. They began our conversation with why SLU? And then at the end, I turned the question around to them. I said, look, as you're trying to figure out if I'm right, I'm trying to figure out if you're right, as any candidate would, you tell me why SLU. And when I heard the answers, it was touching, it was inspiring, it was impressive. Trustees who aren't alums, who care deeply about this place and feel its importance. From your faculty members, their passion for what takes place here. And finally, Badur, the student, the head of SGA was the last to go. And to hear him talk about, I'm a student, I'm from out of state, I'm the head of student government, and let me tell you what SLU has done for me. And let me tell you how exciting I think this would be for you if you came. Let me tell you about the student body. What an impressive, articulate student. A student who you've helped shape and form. I left incredibly impressed. So what happens then is, you may know then, the search committee walks you out of the room, the search consultant, Jamie, walks me out of the room to the elevator. He says, how'd it go? I said, no, no, that's not the question. You tell me how you think it went. <laughs> Jamie said, you know, and they always have to play it close. It seemed to go pretty well. They all seemed to be engaged. So that day I was flying back to Syracuse via Washington, D.C. It's a long story. Uh, I'm in the D.C. airport, happy to get out, uh, given the weather, and be there. And I, I just texted Jamie in the D.C. airport. Looks like I'll make it home. You know, I, I was hoping he'd write back and say, uh, you know, give me some sense, some positive sign. He said, it, it went pretty well. I think they'll invite you back. And then I got to come back and talk to the selection committee, where we had another wonderful conversation, where I could see the passion and commitment of those trustees to this organization. What I realized is you're not just selecting a president now. What you've done through this process, this inclusive process, through the series of conversation that you've held, is you've defined yourself. I don't come here, Fred Pastello, with a vision for SLU. I come here, Fred Pastello, knowing what this organization thinks are important. You've committed yourself first and foremost, put a stake in the ground that you are a Catholic and Jesuit organization. You're part of this 2,000 year faith tradition that puts an emphasis on human dignity and human flourishing. You're part of this 500 year charism. This charism that's dedicated, well known throughout the world for its education, for its rigor, but also forming the head, the heart, and the hands. This 500 year tradition of men dedicating themselves to making the world a better place through academic excellence and rigor, but also through the development of the heart. So you're Catholic Jesuit, you're international. You just didn't become international three or four years ago when it became a fad for everybody to go global or international. You've been so for decades. You have a, a institution in Madrid, Spain, of which you are very proud and is a significant part uh, of this university, a degree-granting institution. You're authentically international in the range of programs you have. Alums in over 140 countries. 
you have nearly a thousand or approximately a thousand international students. So you're Catholic, you're Jesuit, you're international and you're urban. I'm impressed with the fact that this institution has made a commitment to this city in Midtown and what you've done to help with the vibrancy of this area, to realize the importance and the opportunity of using this immediate city and this region to extend the campus, to be part of it. So you're Catholic, you're Jesuit, you're international, you're urban, you're residential. We all know that on the undergraduate side, for example, the average students in the classroom, 15, 16 hours a week or so, maybe some labs, most of that time spent outside the classroom. But you are, take seriously the formation of the whole person. And so you have a series of programs and structures to further develop that student because you have them here in this 24-7 environment. In addition to being Catholic and Jesuit, international, urban, residential, you are a research university. You have a comprehensive set of graduate and professional programs. Here, the focus simply isn't on the transmission of knowledge, as important as that is, but also the acquisition, the discovery, the integration, the preservation of knowledge. As a university and everything else describes that, you're committed deeply to the pursuit of truth and beauty wherever that leads, and in fact, we believe it goes back to God's charge. So we freely pursue, aggressively pursue, truth, and then are enthusiastic about its transmission, and ultimately, it comes down to forming our students. Our key resources to animate all that are our faculty. As I've entered this process, I've been looking at you. It's impressive where your faculty take their degrees from, their publications, their scholarship. I've heard from some of your uh, students and alums, your passion for their formation. Your staff, which is dedicated also to this institution and all that it stands for. You have impressive animated students who become faithful alumni. You've got an impressive range of, range of programs, from top programs, top 10 programs, top 25 programs, the list goes on and on. That's due to you and your work. You've got magnificent facilities, although I realize some of them need some updating, I've been told. Uh, but overall, really impressive facilities around which all that, within which all that takes place. And you've got a very impressive endowment. There are only seven Jesuit research universities. Out of those seven, on most measures, you're one, two, or three. That's impressive. I realize that I come here to build upon that success. And I come here knowing that unlike our beloved Jesuit Pope Francis, I am fallible. And if you want to know just how fallible, you can talk to any of these three people <laughs> sitting up here, go at length. I am but one person. This is a community of hundreds of thousands. You have 120,000 alums. You have 14,000 students, 7,000 faculty and staff, tens of thousands of partners or stakeholders. I am one person. There's nothing that I can do alone. I'm eager to learn, eager to become a part of this community, eager to work with you to continue this trajectory. So this morning, I ask of you the following. I ask for your help, your help for me to get to know SLU better and deeper. Your help to me to become a part of this culture and community. Your help with my transition. Your help in making me successful so that I can work to make the institution successful. Secondly, I ask that you continue to do all the great work that you do. This is an institution that I've always looked up to. And I know that it is because of what everyone in this room and beyond has done. And finally, I ask for your prayers, for me and for my family, for each other and for this community as we move forward together. I am humbled and honored. Thank you for being here this morning.